God bless you guys. Thank you for your service. Thank you. God bless Thank you, you both. Thank Good you. Day. I'm going to do some preaching for about 10 minutes. Good morning, friends. My name is Tony. I'm a member of Grace Fellowship Church here in Davenport, Iowa. Parade will be here shortly, and I will be out of your hair. My friends and I are here today to bring to you the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news that your sins can be forgiven. The good news that you can be reconciled to the God you know. The good news that you can have the assurance of eternal life. The good news that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. The good news that Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. My dear friends, we all have a couple of things in common. We all know that God exists. The atheist, the agnostic, the skeptic, the believer, we all know that God exists. Some simply suppress the truth of that knowledge by their unrighteousness. But every human being was created with the knowledge of God's existence. And each and every one of us have something else in common. We all were given a conscience by this Creator. We all know the difference between right and wrong. Not because of how we were raised, not because of how we were educated, not because of where we live, where we were brought up. We all know the difference between right and wrong because God has written His law on our heart. For example, we all know it's wrong to lie. Not because mom and dad told us not to, but because we were created in the image of God. And the God who made us is not a liar like so many of us are. For the same reason, we know it's wrong to steal. Because we were created in the image of God. And the God who made us is not a thief like so many of us are. We know it's wrong to harbor bitterness or resentment in our heart. We know it's wrong to hate other human beings, regardless of the reason. We know that's wrong because we were created in the image of God. And the God who made us is not a murderer at heart like so many of us are through our hatred. And that's why we are without excuse. When we die and stand before God, our Creator, we will not be able to claim innocence or ignorance of violating His law. We are without excuse. And this God, there is only one, this God, who is holy and righteous and just, will punish our law-breaking, will punish the violation of His law, will punish our sin. And the punishment that God has determined for sin is eternity in hell. And I share that with you because I love you as my neighbor. Because I do not want you or anyone else to perish in their sin. Ma'am, don't lie to your children like that. Love your children. Don't lie to them. They were created knowing God exists just like you. Ma'am, if you lie to your children, it would be better for a millstone to be wrapped around your neck and you thrown into the ocean. Turn to Christ. No, my friends, unlike that lady who denies the existence of God, we all know that God exists. And He is a good and righteous and holy judge. And this judge will punish sin, and that punishment is eternity in hell. But the good news is this, my dear friends, that this same God who is angry with the wicked every day, who will judge the world in righteousness, is the same God who is loving and merciful and gracious and kind. And He showed that great love some 2,000 years ago when God the Father sent His Son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. 
truly God and truly man and without sin. Jesus, God the Son, was with the Father in creation. All things were created by Him and through Him and for Him. He is the sinless Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah who will judge both the living and the dead. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He was born of a virgin, just as the prophet Isaiah declared, more than 700 years before his birth. He lived a perfect life of sinless perfection from cradle to grave, a life he lived for some 33 years here on this earth, a life that you and I have already failed to live today, a life of perfection. And at a time appointed before the foundation of the world, God the Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, voluntarily went to a Roman cross where he suffered and died a horrific bloody death he did not deserve to take upon himself the punishment you and I rightly deserve for our sins against God. And then he forever defeated sin and death when he rose from the grave. And unlike the false gods created in the imaginations and religions of men, Jesus Christ is alive today. And he will return at a time of the Father's choosing, a time that no man knows. When he returns, he will not return as a helpless baby in a filthy feeding trough. He will return as the lion of the tribe of Judah to judge both the living and the dead. And your only hope is to put your faith and your trust in him and in him alone. God the Father made him, God the Son, who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf, so that through him we might become, we might receive the righteousness of God. Don't laugh at her. Pity her. Pity her. Don't laugh at her. She's just storing up wrath for herself for the day of wrath. If you laugh at her, your, your situation is the same as hers. You're in desperate need of Christ because you love yourself and you love your sin more than the God you know. But there is hope for you in Christ. There is forgiveness in Christ. There is reconciliation and redemption in Jesus Christ, but in no one else, nowhere else. God has provided but one way for you to escape his just and his holy wrath. He's provided but one way for you to be forgiven of your hatred of God and His Son and His Gospel, and that is through faith in Jesus Christ. Again, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Do not harden your heart like this woman has, Turn to Christ and live. God is opposed to the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And he is opposed to the proud because God the Son humbled himself. God the Son humbled himself to step out of heaven, to step out of glory, to take on human flesh, and to die a death he did not deserve at the hands of those who deserve only death. He humbled himself. That's why God is opposed to the proud, because God the Son humbled himself. Please humble yourself before God. Turn to Christ and live while God has given you time. Yes, enjoy the parade today. There's nothing wrong with coming out here to enjoy the parade, but understand that your life is a vapor. Your life is a mist. In relation to eternity, you are here today and gone tomorrow. That's why the Word of God says that now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation because tomorrow is not promised. Turn to Christ and live, dear friends, while God has given you time. God bless you. God bless you, sir.